This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Yesterday, we reported that automakers in the U.S. achieved an all-time record for fuel economy in the 2017 model year. They averaged 24.9 miles per gallon per vehicle, but they were supposed to hit 29.3 MPGs. So most automakers had to use fuel economy credits they had saved up to avoid any fines. For the 2018 model year, they're supposed to hit 30.6 miles per gallon, but are projected to hit 25.4. Honda is the only automaker that met the letter of the law. Mazda and Hyundai came close, but everyone else missed it. And automakers that sell full-size pickups and SUVs fell far short. Automakers want relief since the standards were set in 2011, when oil was well over $100 a barrel, and before the car market went through a historic shift to crossovers, SUVs, and pickups. The regulations get much stricter from 2022 to 2025, but environmental groups, such as the Environmental Defense Fund and the Natural Resources Defense Council, say the regulations are working as intended and that automakers should not get any relief. Automakers also face a mandate to sell electric cars, but so far, sales are falling far short. Not counting Tesla, EV sales in the U.S. fell 13% over the last three months. Traditional automakers only sold 10,700 electric cars, or only 0.3% of sales. One reason people aren't buying EVs is that there aren't enough public charging stations. So New York City held a competition to stimulate new ideas on how to quickly come up with a bunch of charging stations at very low cost. A German company called Ubitricity won the contest. Its solution is to tap into lamp posts on the street. EV owners still have to carry their own charging cord around, but they can plug into outlets on the lamp posts for level one or level two charging. Right now, New York has 600 public charging stations. But Jonathan Ells, who is in charge of fleet sustainability for the city, points out that there are 300,000 lampposts in New York. And speaking of charging stations, we have more details on Tesla's V3 supercharger. It features a one megawatt power cabinet that supports a peak rate of 250 kilowatts per car. In other words, a Model 3 long range that's operating at peak efficiency can add up to 75 miles of range in just five minutes. Tesla expects the average charge time at a V3 supercharger to take 15 minutes, which is about half the amount of time customers spend at current stations. A beta site for the public is now open in the Bay Area, but it's only available to Model 3 owners at launch. The first non-beta site will break ground next month and the company will be building more V3 superchargers in North America, Europe, and Asia throughout the year. Here's a crazy stat I saw the other day. Electronic parking brakes were first introduced in 2002, and according to Chassis Brakes International, one of the world's largest brake suppliers, the technology will be featured on more than 35% of all new cars and light trucks sold in North America this year. Electronic parking brakes have a number of advantages, including space and weight savings. And according to chassis brakes, the penetration rate will continue to grow. But for those of us who love to do handbrake turns, especially in snowy conditions or on dirt roads, these things stink. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. So often when we see a new autonomous concept vehicle, the passengers are lounging around or laying back to take a rest. But that creates a new issue for automakers and suppliers to solve. How do you keep riders safe in any seating position? Forcia, one of the world's largest suppliers, has developed a solution that integrates the seat belt and belt retractor into the seat structure as well as airbags at the edges, 
which helps create a cocoon around the passenger. And with the seat belt attached to the structure, the seat can swivel outward to allow easier entry and inward to improve conversations or let back seat passengers see the front screen better. Also, the seat is connected to other systems of the vehicle. So if you're laying back and a crash is detected, the seat will automatically move to the safest possible position. In the past, automakers used to attend just about every single auto show, but now they're picking and choosing which ones to go to. So why are they doing this? Well, on AutoLine this week, we're joined by Steve Bruin from Foresight Research, a company that researches all things auto shows. And here's his insight. The attendance at auto shows is huge. It's 11 million people last year. In the U.S.? In the U.S., in the U.S. 55 markets we measure. 11 million people. That's about, um, of that num of those people, three quarters of them are in the, in the market to buy a car. We're talking about purchase decisions of 4.5 million. When we turn around and look at buyers a year later, it's 3.4 million actually did the buy. That said, why would you leave an auto show if you were a manufacturer? I'll tell you what's happening. The auto companies are falling into a, a measurement trap. They have decided that the number of leads that they collect at an auto show is the, measures the value of the auto show. The problem with that is that only about a third of the buyers, uh, the people who leave an auto show and subsequently buy a car are hand raisers. Only a third. In addition to that, the influence of an auto show goes for a year, not three months. Why is that? If my lease comes up in November, I'm going to go to Rod's show to see what's coming up, even though I know my lease isn't coming up yet. It's an opportunity to do that. If you take leads and do a sales match, and you do it at three months, you will understate the value of an auto show by 10 times. That's the reason for this problem. You can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or look for it on our YouTube channel. But that wraps up today's show. But before we go, if you don't mind seeing something disturbing, do a Google search of Elon Musk's head photoshopped onto The Rock's body. Remember, you can't unsee it. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.